morning everybody, welcome back to another video. Right now I'm in the chopper again with the MX-285. We're heading out to the field and today we're going to be chopping some winter rye. So I think we've got about 140 acres to cut down today. Millions out there with the swather right now. She is apparently having some troubles with the swather. One of the tarps is not moving properly or something. But uh, she's already got a bit on the ground so me and Reese, who's behind me in the truck, we're going to start chopping away and uh, see if we can't catch up to Nalene. We were a little bit worried about this crop drying out on us, kind of getting away from us just because it's plus 30 every day, sun's out, very little rain out here, very little rain. So uh, we were kind of worried about that crop just drying out, so we were very anxious to get chop in here, but uh, it looks like it's going to be fine now, finally, when we're getting out there. So, yeah, I kind of hope to get four tons to the anchor, nothing too crazy. But uh, another 500 tons of silage would be nice. Well, that's not the best start to the day, but that's Nalene going back to the yard. Something's wrong. Luckily, we cut some last night, so we get to start chopping. I'm sure there's still four or five loads on the ground there, so still something to chop. All right, starting up here. First bit of silage going through the chopper. We always go really slow in the start, make sure everything's good. I also always start the chopper, turn the PTO on with the window open, just in case something's not set right, then I can hear it shut it off quickly. But uh, everything seems to be good this morning. Morning, Dennis is here. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Ready to chop some rye, dude? Yeah. Right on. It's something. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, sweet. So yeah, like I said in the last video, we didn't spray it for weeds. We were really debating on whether or not we were just going to kill all the rye and then plant barley here this spring because it was looking miserable. But uh, it made it to my waist here and in quite a bit of the field actually, it's pretty even. So this stuff is crazy. Rye is something that's new to us at the farm. This is only the second year that we've been growing it. Last year we did one quarter, this year we did two quarters. And I think for the next year, if we can, we'll do four. It's just been surprising us in terms of feed quality and the ability to create tonnage in dry years. So this crop here has maybe had three inches of rain, not even. And uh, it's waist high. We'll have to see how it turns out yet, but uh, it's just doing so good because it gets that head start in the spring with the snow melt moisture and it's not only dependent on rain. And that's a real bonus for us out here, especially in these last couple of years. But that was a uh, second load that went back to the pile, Dennis there. Good start to the day, other than of course the swather's down. Mechanic Brent is our third truck, but he's probably looking at the swather right now, so that's why I'm not chopping. But uh, hopefully you can get that thing going and we'll have a good day. That's just the fourth load, it's about eight o'clock already. Swather is down. Um, I think dad went to the city to get some parts for it. There's a roller or something wrong with it. So I got this swath left and then about 500 meters more of swath there. And that's gonna be it until the swather's back up and running, which is unfortunate.
supposed to be out in the field. Oh, that sucks. They have a tarp pulled out in front of it. We're just in the truck with Dennis right now. He's pulling his load over the scale. Huge load. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, not bad yet. Just short of four ton. I got the tarp off the swather header here. I guess right here there's a roller that's buggered up. That's why we're stopped. Nice! Yeah! Swather's back up and running. Heading back to the field. Nice! Back in the field, Nalene's coming. Just gotta wait for her to lay a bit of swath and then we'll be right on her. Just kills your whole momentum for the day starting out like this. We only got five loads to the pile. It's probably, what time is it? Nine o'clock, not great. I don't know if we're gonna finish this field today yet anymore, but hopefully not. That means we got more tons. Broke a knife? Uh, yeah, section. It's, uh... It's just a knife. Yeah. 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 Not gonna get it here. Everybody's here to mansplain it to yeah. me. I'm trying to help. <laughs> Put your finger there. You're never gonna get that bolt out. Oh yeah. That's yes. what I'm pointing at. Well, maybe yeah. if you hammer it hard enough, man. Oh, you did just break it. <laughs> Look at these guns. Yeah. <laughs> You guys are shit. Well, yeah, so it's a little unfortunate since she broke down this morning. She couldn't get ahead of us. So now as soon as she breaks a knife, we're standing still. You're not gonna get the thread through that, okay? No matter how wishful thinking. Oh, I moved the camera. Uh-oh. Oh, the screen turned off. Why is that? Uh, to save energy, I oh, guess. Oh, it's still it's recording? Still oh, okay. This, this, this is making good content, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. Good content, bad for silaging. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Productive, productivity's at yeah, all. Yeah, because now I'm holding up the whole freaking line. Yeah. Yeah, you are. 
I'm you can sorry, just keep guys. cutting through lunch. Just don't take lunch. Just keep cutting while we all sit around and I'm eat not, lunch. I'm not and then, out and then you'll be ahead of them. No. It'll be like when I go sharpen the knives and you guys all get to hang out. Yeah. That's when we all scratch our heads and do nothing for 10 minutes. Yeah. <laughs> She's working hard. Yeah. We're gonna get comments that uh, she was just working away, stressing like crazy, getting this thing fixed. And we're just standing here making fun of her. Yep. Yeah. Well, Dennis helped a little bit. I, I put the knot on. Yeah, you did. Yeah. Cue the Jeopardy theme song. Da, 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 da. <laughs> it's working. Okay, this morning we were able to put up 28 loads. Not too bad considering all the breakdowns that we have had. It's lunchtime now, so look forward to that. Got us some pizza today? Yes. Nice. Good pizza. And the Asquith bar. You betcha. Nice. You bet. So we just had lunch that was pretty good. Pizza and then Miriam made some dirt cups there, some pudding with whipped cream and some Oreos. Pretty unreal, gonna be hard not to fall asleep after that one, but uh, we're just here sharpening the chopper knives. I heard something go through it this morning, uh, probably a rock. And uh, I guess I was right because there is some bite marks in our teeth here. Make sure, oh yeah, there's a, there's a whole knife missing right there. So, that's nasty. So usually, if you see that knife missing there, um, the rest of the blades will have some more damage in that row. This one looks pretty good though. So most likely a rock. Maybe it was a piece of metal. Usually metal does a little bit more damage than what I'm seeing here. But, uh, oh no, that's a gnarly gnarly bite too you can see it smacked something hard the whole edge there is just dull finish sharpening the blades uh, basically this has a grindstone on the end and that runs it back and forth over the blades and every time I twist it It brings that grindstone a little bit closer to the blade So I'll pull it across twist it push it back and uh, every time I'm putting a little bit more grindstone on those knives And that's how we sharpen them Okay, so this knife That one's probably not gonna get sharp Just because it's got such a bite out of it, but the other half is pretty good. So I think they're looking good That doesn't sound good, better go check it out. So it's just a broken pickup tooth, nothing too serious. A lot of people ask me, does my neck get sore when I'm chopping? You know, I go sometimes 10 days straight with barley silage in the middle of summer, and I'm just looking straight and then behind all day long. And yes, yeah, sometimes my neck does get sore. Usually it's not too bad though. I'm able to swivel the seat about 45 degrees, maybe not quite that much, but pretty close to halfway. So I'm kind of pointing in between and I'm just looking left to right instead of forwards backwards. So. I'm not cranking my neck that hard every time, but uh, I took a time lapse and you guys can see exactly how many times I'm looking back. I think I look back more time than I do forward. So just keeping an eye on the chopper, especially when you're trying to max it out, put the maximum amount of product through this thing. You gotta be keeping a solid eye on it constantly. You can't look away for more than a couple seconds. Otherwise you might plug it or you might start to blow it over the truck. Um, it's in need of constant babysitting, so.
broke another knife, but got it fixed super quick. It's the side effect. This field's not heavy enough where Annalene can pull ahead of us. So she's constantly just a few swaths ahead. And as soon as something goes wrong with that swath, we're on her again. But uh, she's pretty quick at fixing those knives, so that's good. Last bit of swath for the day. So that's the pile, looks pretty good. 69 loads total, just under four tons an acre. Pretty good for the rye crop. That's the plastic crew right there. What? What's wrong? Right now we're just lining the edge of the plastic with dirt. Goes quick with two wheel loaders. Boom, all done, one day. Rough day. Lots of breakdowns with Swather especially, but uh, we got her done, so that's all that matters. In the last silaging video I made, I told you guys if you have any questions about it, you could leave them down below and we'd answer them. So a couple of the questions I got um, were about our bunks and they say, what's in between your bunks? There's 10 feet of room between the two concrete walls and uh, we just, that's something we decided to do so that we could put the plastic over top of the dirt in between. Um, it's really annoying to cover piles if you don't have this area in between if you just have a single wall separating them It is doable. Uh, you can put the plastic inside of the wall pull it over top But this way we can pull the plastic over the dirt here put tires on the edge and it seals a good seal on there We don't have too much rot there and uh, it's kind of just a nice option to have and then you can walk between your piles scout them out, see if there's any holes in there, and uh, do that sort of thing. You can also stack a bunch of tires in here, which makes covering the piles a lot easier. And uh, yeah, so that's what is in between the piles. Uh, the other question I got was, can we put our big blue four-wheel drive tractor in front of the JF stall? And uh, the answer to that is no, because this tractor does not have a PTO. Um, it's strictly built for pulling a big cedar with a big tank. And uh, they never really planned to put a PTO on here for implements like that. Be nice to maybe put a manure spreader behind here too if you have a beast of a manure spreader. But uh, this one was optioned without the PTO. I believe you could order a PTO for it, but uh, 
it's just a little bit too big. I think it'd be pretty awkward too. Yeah, you can see it's just all weights back there. There's no PTO, no room for it either. So uh, that's why we don't put this in front of it. We could potentially put a blade on here and push up silage with it. Uh, the reason we don't do that is because this thing is a manual transmission. It's not so nice to go forwards and backwards. So you can see you got your uh, one, two, three, four, and then low, medium, high, reverse. So if you're going up the pile, you got to clutch, put it in reverse, clutch, put it forward every single time. And uh, then you got to control your hydraulics for a blade you would have on here. It would work good maybe if we had a drive over pile, could just drive over top of the pile and pack. So we might do that in the future. But uh, for now, no, not in front of the chopper, not pushing silage, just, uh, doing it the way we're doing it now. Uh, the other question I got was how much silage we feed per day, or I think more specifically the question was how long does one truck last? And I think we're feeding about two and a half trucks per day, around 20 tons of silage a day to all the cows total. Uh, we do have a thousand head total here at the farm. That's from day one calves all the way to the oldest milking cow. And uh, we also raise our steers, of course, so that takes a lot more silage. So we got to we're gonna make a lot of silage every single year to uh, make sure we can feed all the cows. But uh, yeah, that is gonna be it for today's video, guys. Thanks for those questions at the end, and uh, I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching.